ready. You know, God didn't promise any of us a rose garden. And there is no room in God's army for soldiers who stand ready to wilt at the first sign of trouble. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, there's trouble coming. How do I know there's trouble coming? Because God's word tells us that there's some rough stuff coming our way. God has chosen and handpicked some soldiers that he knows can cut the mustard. We stood with him against Satan in the first earth age at Satan's rebellion. We are God's elect. We are the special forces in God's army. When there's any heavy lifting to be done, God knows he can count on us to get it done. It's not a time for us to drop our guard and be at ease. It is a time for us to get the word of God firmly established in our minds. You know, that's the seal that keeps you from receiving the mark of the beast. It's time also for us to get that gospel armor on, to have it on and in place. It's time to get ready. Open your Bibles, if you would, to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We ask that word of wisdom in Yeshua's precious name, as always, Father, we ask you to open eyes, open ears this day. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, by our gathering together unto him. Now, what's our subject? The return of Jesus Christ. Does it say we're going to Jesus Christ? No, it says he's coming here. That's how it comes down, folks. We're not flying away. He's coming here. Acts chapter 1, verse 11 makes that abundantly clear. Verse 2, that we be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. Paul doesn't, doesn't want us to be shaken in mind or be troubled. He doesn't want us to be nervous or anxious. He wants us to be ready neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. The day of Christ, of course, the Lord's day, the beginning of the millennium. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. This word deceived in this verse is a Greek word that most of you are familiar with, expateo, as it appears in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 3, where it's translated beguiled. And it has only one meaning. It means wholly seduced. As Satan deceived or wholly seduced Mother Eve, uh, he doesn't want us to be deceived. This falling away in the Greek, apostasia. You can almost hear our English word apostasy in the Greek word. That happens first. Before Jesus returns, this has to happen. Are you ready? Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalted him, himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. There's a second witness to this in Isaiah chapter 14, where Satan is called Lucifer. It says there that he's gonna put his throne on the north side. That's where God's throne belongs, on the north side. And he's going to exalt himself as though he is the most high. Verse five. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Remember, we talked about these things. You should have this fresh in your mind. You should be locked and loaded with God's word. 
verse 6. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. One more verse and then we'll backtrack and explain. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. This word, verb letteth is a transitive verb and you, it transfers the action back to the previous verse. What this is saying is he who withholdeth, it's Michael, the archangel, is holding Satan in heaven, but he's not gonna hold him forever. Revelation 12, seven, he's gonna cast him out onto earth. We're gonna go there in a minute. But this, in verse seven, it states only he, that the he there is Michael, who now letteth will let until he, that being Satan, being taken out of the way. When does that happen? When he cast Satan and his angels out onto earth. Verse eight, and then, and I'll add in only then, shall that wicked, that's a capital W there, don't overlook, be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Revelation 1, 16, the tongue of Jesus Christ is a two-edged sword that cuts both ways and shall de destroy with the brightness of his coming. The Lord wins, Satan loses. That should make you very happy. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. You know, he's going to be supernatural. We need to be tuned for that. We need to be prepared spiritually and mentally for him to have supernatural powers. Those who are deceived by him are going to go, wow, look at that. He has to be God. We're going to look at that and go, that's Satan and God's word is true. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, those who are spiritually dead, deceived, because they, they receive not the love of truth that they might be saved. They would rather listen to falsehoods and lies to depend on their salvation, to count on their salvation, such as the rapture theory. Verse 11, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. If they want to believe a lie, go ahead and believe the lie. I'm going to stick with God's truth. I know it's true. I've seen it come to pass, the prophecies. Ever closer and closer, this, this time, people, it's time to get ready. It's happening right before our eyes. We've got to be ready. The strong delusion, Isaiah chapter 29, verse 9, it states there, they, they're drunk, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. What is it that they're drunk on? They're drunk on the traditions of men. They're intoxicated with falsehoods and lies. Romans chapter 11, verse 8, also speaks of that stupor. Verse 12 that they all might be damned or condemned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. They, they're happy with their lies and their falsehoods and they're prepared to crawl in bed with the Antichrist. I speak spiritually. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. The truth. You, you believe it. You know the truth when you hear it. Verse 14. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not the fake. Not the false one. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. Stand fast. Don't be a, a, wee, a reed that blows in the wind with this doctrine and then another doctrine comes along and you blow this way and then you blow this way. Stand fast. 
And you will, I know you will, with the truth of God's word and with that gospel armor on, you're prepared, you're ready to stand against the fiery darts of Satan. They're coming. Stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. And that's God's doctrine, not uh, uh, the traditions of men. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. You know, I said earlier that God's elect are ready to do the heavy lifting. But I want you to know that heavy lifting brings heavy rewards, everlasting life. Comfort your hearts and establish, set fast, in other words, you in every good word and work. Well, there's that word work. You done any work for the Lord lately? Well, how can I do work for the Lord? Well, have you planted a seed of truth with someone who is lost in this world of darkness? That's a work. That's a work that you can take with you. Revelation chapter 14, 13. You can't take your bank account with you. You can't take your stocks and your bonds with you. But you can take your works. And whether they're good, bad, or ugly, they're going with you. You know, when you see a member of the body of Christ who's down and you edify them, that's a good work. There are all kinds of good works that we can do. You know, if you're going to be ready, you better know what's coming. And let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Paul tells us what's coming. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 1, and it reads, This know also that in the last days, that's the fig tree generation, we're in it, perilous times shall come. Difficult times are coming. Are you ready? For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, that's especially for money, boasters, proud, that's pride is Satan's downfall, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Boy, that sounds a whole lot like today, doesn't it? Turn on the evening news and it's shocking what's going on in the world now. And this shouldn't surprise us. I believe one third of God's children who followed Satan in the first earth age are here on earth now. I mean, how appropriate. They followed Satan in the first earth age they're given a chance now, follow Antichrist or follow the Lord, wait for the Lord. Without natural affection, this means hard-hearted toward family, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, that means no self-control, fierce, despisers of those that are good. And I'll tell you what, it's open season on Christians now. How many of you have seen CNN's program, Finding Jesus? Fact, fiction, or fraud? Open your eyes. It's happening, people. Christians are being attacked at every, at every corner. We've got, we've got to have the gospel armor on. We've got to have the truth of his words sealed in our minds. We've got to be ready. Traitors, heady, this means rash, high-minded, that's puffed up, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They put their flesh man in charge of their spiritual man. They love the pleasures of the flesh more than they love God. They leave God completely out of their lives. They don't have time for him. They're so wrapped up in the ways of the world. It hurts his feelings, I know. Verse five, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. That's a, point, that's a warning. Stay away from them that are like this. 
having a form of godliness that reminded me of Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13, where God says, you know, they draw near to me with their lips. In other words, they talk a good game, but their hearts are far, far from me. And the reverence of me is taught by the precept of men, taught by the traditions of men. For of this sort are they which creep into houses. They sneak into even the houses of God and even from his pulpits and lead captive silly women laden with sins. They, they lead silly men laden with sins also captive, led away with divers lust. You know, the prophets in the time of Jeremiah told the people, you're going into captivity. And that's what this is talking about. Captivity is what they're leading people into. And I'm talking about the captivity, of course, of Antichrist. They're being set up to believe the rapture theory. And they're going to be deceived. They're going to fall hook, line, and sinker for Satan laden with sin. They're not even taught to repent. Ever learning and never able to come to knowledge of the truth. Pew potatoes. They go to church, but they sit there and they hear the same salvation message over and over and over. Never coming to the truth. They're stuck on milk. They never do get around to studying the meat of God's Word. That's where you gain truth, knowledge and truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, reprobate, that means worthless, of no judgment concerning the faith. Now Janus and Jambres, you all know, were the Egyptian music magicians. And when they opposed Moses and Aaron, and God instructed Aaron to throw his rod down on the ground, and it turned into a serpent. Verse 9, But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. Janus and Jambres threw their rods down, and they became serpents as well. Aaron's rod swallowed their rods up. But thou hast known my doctrine, Paul speaking, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, that's patience, charity, that's love, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came uh, unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what, per what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. You know, Paul had a rough life. I think three times he was shipwrecked. Twice they gave him stripes. That's, that's taking a whip and, and striking him with a whip. They threw him in prison. But God delivered him from all persecutions. And I want you to know that if you, if you love the Lord and you're doing his work, he will deliver you from all persecutions as well. Verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ, Jesus shall suffer persecution. Do you hear that? Did I tell you there's trouble coming? There's some rough stuff on the horizon? Paul told you there as well. Psalm 34, verse 19. It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Are you ready? <clears throat> Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall say, we got that, verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You haven't seen anything yet, is what Paul says. It's going to get worse. And I tell you, just as I think it can't get any worse, it gets worse. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them from the Holy Spirit through the word of God. 
and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. He's speaking to Timothy specifically here. And you know, Timothy's mother and grandmother held church meetings in their home when it was dangerous to be a Christian. So Paul, excuse me, Timothy was taught the word from an early age. In the introduction, when I asked the first time Passover attendees to stand up, I mentioned that we have to be considerate of the newcomers. And this verse made me think that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. You're lucky if that's the case. We get letters every week from people who are 85 years old. And they say, you know, I've gone to church all my life. But I've never understood God's word. And when I heard you or Pastor Arnold preaching, I knew that was truth. I knew what I had been missing out on for 85 years. Verse 16, all scripture. That's the Old Testament and the New Testament, my friend. Is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, and I'll add discipline. That the man of God may be perfect, that means mature or, or complete, whole, truly furnished unto all good works. Oh, there's that word again, works. Have you done any good works for the Lord? The Antichrist comes first, you all know that, but. I want you to plan it in your mind, the way things are going to come down. God's Word tells us. Go to Revelation chapter 12 with me. It's time to get ready. Revelation chapter 12 is a parenthetical chapter. It's kind of out of place. But it covers a huge period of time. It goes all the way back to the first earth age and it also carries us all the way up to the end of this dispensation. Let's go with chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder, that's a sign in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. You know this woman is symbolic of Mother Israel the 12 stars, the 12 tribes of Israel. And she, this is Mother Israel, being with child cried, travailing in birth and pained to be relieved. There was about to be a birth of a new age. This one, the second earth age. And there appeared another wonder, another sign in heaven. And behold, a great dragon, I wonder who this is. Well, go to verse 9 and you'll find out. The dragon is the devil, Satan. Having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. The same political structure that we have in this, the second earth age. Only in the first earth age, there were seven crowns, seven leaders. This time around, the second earth age, there are 10. If you read chapter 13, verse 1, we'll back up what I just said. Verse 4, and his tail, this is the dragons, drew a third part of the stars of heaven. These are the children of God. I said earlier, a third part of God's children followed Satan at Satan's rebellion and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Satan has worked awfully hard to destroy that seed line through which Jesus Christ would come. Genesis chapter six, you see there where the fallen angels came to earth and they looked on the daughters of Adam and they took them to wife. What was their purpose? To destroy the seed line through which Messiah would come. If Satan could accomplish that, Satan would win. The Lord would lose. 
And she brought forth a man child. Here we go to the second earth age. This man child, of course, being Jesus Christ, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Now we switch to second advent even, when he returns as Lord of lords and King of kings. Revelation chapter 19. And her child was caught up into God and to his throne. That happened after the crucifixion. He was glorified and went to the right hand of God. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God. We're going to be talking about that place in this evening's lecture. A place that God has prepared for us as well. That they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. A coincidence that it's the same number of days the two witnesses have? Revelation chapter 11, verse 3? I don't think so. That time, of course, shortened for the elect's sake. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. These are the Nephilim, the fallen angels, or Satan's angels. And prevailed not. Satan loses. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. This is future. This hasn't happened yet. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. It states that he deceives the whole world except those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. You want to make sure your name is in that book. He was cast out into the earth. Are you ready? And his angels were cast out with him. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 10. Paul warns women, you need to have a covering over your head because of the angels. That's what he was talking about. When Satan and his angels are cast out of heaven, Men and women, you better have the covering of Jesus Christ over your head. Jesus warned us about these angels also in Matthew chapter 24, verses 36, 37, and 38. He said, it's going to be just like in the days of Noah when the day of the Lord appears. They're going to be eating and drinking and giving and taking in marriage. Genesis chapter 6. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. And if you think Job's friends were good at false accusations, wait until you hear Satan. He is the accuser. And they, this is God's elect, overcame him. You want to be an overcomer? Here's how you do it. By the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. When the Holy Spirit speaks through you, even the gainsayers will be convinced. And they love not their lives unto death. Matthew chapter 10 verse 28 says, fear them who can kill your flesh body, not. Fear he who can destroy both your flesh and your soul in hell. Verse 12, therefore rejoice ye heavens. Why? Satan's gone and his angels and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Three and a half years originally shortened for the elect's sake to five months, Revelation chapter 9. And when the dragon, that's the devil, the Antichrist, saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, that's Israel, especially Israel with eyes to see and ears to hear, God's elect. He persecuted the woman which uh, brought forth the man child Christians and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness unto her place 
where she is nourished for a time, that's one, and times, plural, that's two and a half time. That's three and a half times from the face of the serpent. Three and a half years originally cut to five months. And what are these wings of the eagle? Well, you can read about those in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 11, the song of Moses where God describes himself as a, a mother eagle who fluttereth up over her nest and beareth her young up on her wings. Exodus chapter 11, verse 46, God says, I bear you, speaking to Israel, on my wings as an eagle out of Egypt. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. You know what this is, it's the flood of lies that come out of Satan's mouth. There's not gonna be another flood as in the days of Noah. God promised that. I'll never flood the earth. He put a bow, a rainbow in the heavens to, to document that he would never ever flood the earth again. Verse 16. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth. It's not the first time that this will have happened. Korah, you remember his group that, that rebelled against Moses and God in Numbers uh, chapter 20? Uh, the earth opened up, next Numbers 16, excuse me. But the earth opened her mouth and swallowed Korah and his troop and swallowed up the flood which the dragon, that's the devil, cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. That's the elect. He's coming to make war with you. Are you ready? Well, how can I be ready for that? The word of God sealed in your mind, the gospel armor on and in place, which keep the commandments of God. That's you. You do the best you can to keep the commandments of God. There are some who just don't care and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Chapter 13, you all know the first beast is the political beast. Let's skip ahead to the second beast. That's the Antichrist. Verse, uh, go with verse 11 of chapter 13 of Revelation. And I beheld another beast. This is not the political beast. This is the religious beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. He's gonna have two horns like the lamb of God, but he's gonna speak like the dragon. Why is he gonna speak like the dragon? Because he is the dragon. Wake up, friends. This is the false prophet that Jesus Christ warned us about in Matthew chapter 24, verses 5 and 11. And he exercised all the power of the first beast, the political beast, before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. You talk about a revival. That's going to be a revival. They're going to be celebrating like crazy. They're going to have a new religion. The only problem is their religion leaves Yahweh out. And he doth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for the Antichrist to snap his fingers and lightning come down from heaven? He can take a motor home or a bus out in this parking lot and make it spin around on its nose. He's going to be supernatural. Are you ready for that? Again, those who are deceived are going to see those miracles and they're going to think, wow, that's God. That has to be divine in nature. You're going to see it and go, God's word is truth. God's word told me that this was going to happen. Verse 14, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. He's going to be supernatural, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, 
saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. Verse 15, and he, this is the Antichrist, had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, spiritually uh, killed. Again, we don't fear them who can kill the body, the flesh body. Verse 16, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads. You all know what the antidote to that mark is. It's having the seal of God in your mind. That's what I encourage you to do. Focus on God's word. Establish that seed firmly in your mind so that you cannot be deceived. Verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Are you ready for that? How many times has Pastor Arnold warned you that you need to have some non-perishable food goods set aside you need to have some precious metals, either silver or gold. Let me ask you, if right now, right now, this very moment, you could not buy or sell anymore. Would you be able to survive? It's time to get ready. Verse 18, here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Six, six, six. The Antichrist comes in the sixth seal, the sixth trump, and the sixth vial, the plague. Some of you are going to be delivered up to this Antichrist. Turn back to Revelation chapter 2. The words of Jesus Christ. I'm reading from Revelation chapter 2, verse 8. And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write, These things saith the first, Alpha, and the last, Omega, which was dead. He was crucified and is alive. He resurrected. You know, Smyrna and Philadelphia, the only two churches that Christ found no fault with. Why? Because they knew who the Kenites were. They knew who those were that claimed to be of our brother Judah, but were of the synagogue of Satan. My words? No. Verse 9. I know thy works. Here's that word works again. Do you have any works for God? And tribulation. That's trouble, remember? Paul told us it's going to be trouble in the horizon. Here it is again. There's trouble on the way. And poverty, but thou art rich, rich in knowledge, because you have the seal of God in your mind. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, them who say they are of Judah, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Jesus told them in John chapter 8, verse 44. He said, you are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of him you do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Who was the first murderer? Cain. He's talking about the descendants of Cain, which are the Kenites. Verse 10, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Do you trust Jesus? He just said, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Are you ready for that? Are you mentally and spiritually prepared? That ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death or before death. Death is Satan. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. 
and I will give thee a crown of life. Don't allow anyone to take your crown. He that hath an ear, let him hear. That's always for you, the elect. Perk your ears up when you hear. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Or an eye, let him see. What the Spirit saith unto the churches, he that overcometh. Do you want to be an overcomer? He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. You know, I said in the opening that those who do the heavy lifting get the heavy rewards. The second death is the death of the soul. And that, ha that has no power over you if you stay with the Lord. And he's talking about Revelation chapter 20, verses 5 and 6. The overcomers, those who don't worship the Antichrist, participate in the first resurrection. And the power, the second death, has no power over you. We began in 2 Thessalonians in closing. Let's turn back to 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 1 of 2 Thessalonians. That's after 1 Thessalonians for those of you that aren't real familiar with the scriptures. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Silvanus, that's Silas, and Timotheus, that's Timothy, under the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. A salutation. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul knew that the only true peace of mind was from our Lord and Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you. Paul's proud of this church. Brethren, as it is meet or deserving or worthy, because that your faith groweth exceedingly and the charity, that's love, of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. It increases. And you know, love is the glue that holds the body of Christ together. Do you feel the love in this room today? That, that's the body of Christ. We're, we're bound together by that love. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. As Christians, we're not promised a rose garden. We're going to have persecution. We're going to have tribulation. It's time to get ready. Which is a manifest token, plain evidence in other words, of the righteous judgment of God. God's fair in his judgment that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. Are you counted worthy? of the kingdom? I know most of you are. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. God said in Psalm 105 verse 15, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. And you know what? He means it. I've seen it time and time again. If somebody does something negative toward you, you don't need to reach out to strike back at them. Just give it three months, six months. God will take care of it. It just said, God, uh, it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And he means it. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. We're going to be talking about that rest tonight at length when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. That's the second advent. And you know what? I want you to remember that. When you think that you cannot take any more, when you feel like you just can't endure anymore, hold on. Reinforcements are coming. 
Jesus Christ is returning and he's not coming back in swaddling clothes to be crucified on a cross this time. He's coming back to straighten things out. And I'll tell you what, the way they are right now, it's going to take him to straighten it out. I say, come, Lord Jesus, come. You know what? I see him on that horse, that white war horse, Revelation chapter 19. And right over his shoulder, I see a sergeant. And I truly believe if he were here right now, he'd be saying, get ready. Verse 8, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a payday coming for those who are righteous. There's a payday coming for the wicked who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Verse 10, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. And there is no other testimony will do, beloved, the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of his calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. Verse 12 to conclude that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace that's love of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's time to get ready, beloved. If you get anything out of this weekend, I hope it's that you need to get the seal of God firmly planted in your mind. That you get that gospel armor on. I'll tell you what, you won't have a chance against Satan if you don't have that gospel armor on. Those fiery darts will find you and they will hurt. But if you got that gospel armor on, he can't harm you. Tonight we're going to be talking about a place that you can go when the going gets rough. And we're going to close in prayer. Let's go to his throne. Yahweh, Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the written word, Father. The written word that tells us all things, Father. You said, behold, I have told you all things. And your word and the prophets, uh, the apostles, Paul, they all tell us what's going to happen, Father. And you have a group here, Father, that wants to serve you, Father. Please continue to open our eyes, open our ears, reveal your, your plan to us, Father. We will work to accomplish your plan because we know it's your plan that's important, not our own. Uh, be with our military troops or in harm's way around the world, Father. We ask you to bless this congregation this weekend and, and let the, the presence of the Holy Spirit flow here. In Jesus' precious name, amen.